This is the John Hallett Podcast with John Hallett. It's because the way we're living, we need to change it, make a change today, and all business. learn from failure. Maybe they just wanted it a little bit more than you. That's probably the fact. And now your host, John Hallett. Anthony music and his awesome song if you haven't checked it out i don't know where you've been but you should definitely check it out Um, a lot of great lines in there i think it's a a great anthem for where we're at now um what the world's coming to there's a lot of good things in there tax to no end your dollar ain't shit right i think uh i've been really fired up Maybe the last... Well, I'm always fired up about Every something. Day. Yeah, I mean, it's... But uh, <laughs> in a good way. Um, but, you know, taxes is just crazy. Um, you know, we were talking... Um, I was a little late getting up here um, into the studio to record this, talking, you know, just how much expenses are <sighs> when you're doing a small business. I don't think people, people need- have any real clue, let alone... Health insurance, um, especially like where my wife and I are at, we're both self-employed, both have our yeah. own businesses, and you know you're taxed to no end. And you go, then you got health insurance on top of that. So the last tax cycle was the one where I had actually been almost exclusively working, like say half a year for myself. I was shocked. It is so hard to be a small business owner, which is the real driver of wealth. For anything that you want to do, right? You, you, if you want, well, create you got to work business, for yourself. Yeah. You got to create a business, but they make mm-hmm. it so hard, and you tax so much. It's, I see why people don't want to do it. Well, you see, mm-hmm. um, I was saying, well, um, I have no idea what episode or when it was, but it had to be fairly recent um, on Shark Tank that this guy had a app. I think he was calling it Bueller, like Ferris Bueller, like, and it was you created a recording. Of yourself, looking like you're in the Zoom meeting or whatever, Microsoft Teams or whatever, and uh, you could upload it. You could put in the meeting link on their on their portal, and now now you're there, looking like you're paying working. attention and like not at the meeting. None of the sharks obviously invested. All being like, we don't want our employees to do, like what. And I think the biggest one was like communication. Like human beings need communication. Yeah. It's like one thing. Like I hate text messaging. People can't even text message you back now, oh, or it well, takes weeks, or they never do. They don't. They decide, oh, I'll respond later, and then they don't. Right, or they forget, and they're like, oh yeah, I forgot. And it comes to back. Um, but you know, it sounds like a crazy device. Like we're gonna give you a way to cheat at work, so you cannot be there. So you cannot be there. Right. So what happens after the six minute loop? And you, you know, know there's only so many times you can do this, again. right? I mean, <laughs> it sounds stupid, but I'm know, sure somebody out there, there wants it. I mean, somebody's out there like, I'm gonna get myself some. Some cheating time at yeah, <laughs> I mean, work. You know, but this kid had uh, gone, you know, he's living with his parents, dropped out of college, maxed out all his credit cards. Well, you know, I mean, he is trying. I don't like his business yeah. plan, but he's trying. And now you've maxed out your credit cards. You're living with your parents. Right. It's like you're like George lose. Costanza. Right. <laughs> Which we talked about I'm before. unemployed and I live with my parents. parents. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> like... Um, it's interesting. I don't, but small business, like you, it, it is not easy. No. You know, we talk about it all the time and, you know, game planning. I think that's, you know, something that we look at down the line of, as we get older of running more of the clear sky mentoring and helping people and brainstorming. I mean, just sitting down with people that have been in that small business, you know, we talk, you know, about a gym, martial arts, fitness, what I've done here and just those brainstorming, mentoring yeah. things are, I mean, you can pay a ton for that stuff. Oh, yeah. I it's mean, it's valuable information. I mean, just some of the stuff. Right. Um, Joel here works for a company and he's like, oh, we got this free software, you know, like where are people clicking and where are they hovering mm-hmm. around with their mouse on your website? Uh, and then it's $60,000 a year. You're Ooh, like, what small business could afford that? I mean, even there's going to be big businesses that are going to like, how much? Yeah. I mean, that's where I, I love, you know, talking to people and giving them the honest answers of people yeah. like, I'm going to start a gym. I'm like, what do you think it's going what to cost, cost you? And most people don't get further than rent. And well, then I'm going to take home all this money after I buy this equipment. 
you know, and they forget about everything else. So, you know, that's something we're always here, you know, building out as we, as we go with all of this of, you know, it's the clear sky um, way we're here to mentor. Cause I think there's a lot of businesses. I tell people, I'm like, you know, our last I had really high hopes for the company. They had a really great um, presentation, even just some of their videos on YouTube, explaining the company. And then I'm going through rep, 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 and you're like, what the heck have I paid for here on yeah. these Google ads? Mm -hmm. And you're like, huh, I just spent a ton. And then they want more money. I feel like so many companies that are going, you know, in that, in that, we'll just say 500 to a $1,000 market mm -hmm. um, to add what, you know, marketing and help like that. They all tell me they want more money. That's all they ever say. I mean, if you have it's to increase always, your spend, increase your spend. How many times have you heard that more from money. Yeah, just marketing more agencies, money. anybody? Well, if you want to get more leads, spend more, money. spend more money. And you're like, shouldn't we be getting something for right. this? Well, well, the, the thing is, is that they control the spigot on that, right? For that 500 bucks, they could turn it way up or they can turn it way down. So they're not really being your friend. I mean, they're just taking your money, giving you crumbs, essentially, and then asking you for more money once they, you're like, these crumbs aren't enough, right? And it's like this this addiction they're trying to sell you. It's like a, a marketing drug. Yeah. And then you want more, right? Because if you have a little bit of success and it trickles in, then they're going to be like, see how much, how well that worked for you when you spent that money? Now just spend a little more. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's where, like, you know, I've said like what, when I moved to Castle Rock, now we're like 17 and a half years ago, hmm. I guess, because it's fairly easy because my daughter was born after we were here like two months. There you go. So, um, so it's easy for me to be like, how long have I been in Castle Rock? How long with my daughter? I'm losing. <laughs> when I moved to Castle Rock, you know, it was a ton smaller it was, but it was still a bigger town than I came from on Nantucket Island. And I reached out to all of the martial arts schools. Only one, well, one guy said he would hire me. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, that sounds great. And when I got here, he said he wouldn't pay me. And I'm like, well, that's different than hiring me and starting a program. Yeah. And I went, okay, well, I'm going to open my own gym then. But only one person that they were gone, like it was an ATA um, Taekwondo. And I think that went through a bunch of different people that kind of took over sure. the whatever the franchise or whatever the heck they were doing. Um, it was only one person reached out to me. Mm -hmm. I reached out to some people over COVID. But I really feel like even in this small town, I'm like, hey, gyms in Castle Rock. We're all competing again, and everybody tries to lowball everybody else, or even like you know, we've got our new 30 day yeah. um, thing because other gyms are out there doing it. And you're like, now you're putting valuable resources in a new person. I know what they're, they're hoping that they come become part of the culture and they make it a habit, mm -hmm. but you're also nobody's painting your house, even a side of it, for you know, what the equivalent. Right. Like, come and clean my kitchen and I'll see if I like you. Mm -hmm. Nobody's no. doing that. No. But gyms get caught up in these. It's yeah. such a tough industry, right? Because not everybody, what you should, you should get out there and do something hard. Push your body. Your mind will follow. <laughs> like, there's some great, great benefits of it. And just people, they've never done it. But yeah. we're in a tough industry. And then people are like, let's knock the price down, knock the price down. And you're like... I can't make a living when you keep. Well, we're trying to make a down. living right. here. Just keeping the lights on. Electricity alone. Is I really hilarious. think gyms and Castle Rock should all unite. I right. mean, it's like a co-op, is what you're talking. And about. And go like, why should we, why don't we like the product, the coaching, yeah. and the community, the atmosphere, you know, the different styles, and even you know, I mean, Krav Maga has different styles. People have different flavors of BJJ. Mm -hmm. There's tons of different things out there. Instead of competing on price and crazy offers that you're really saying like, oh, what's my return? Sometimes that stuff's really freaking hard in the yeah. martial arts because you're like, oh, some people come back six months later and how much you're spending on Google and Facebook. I'm sure. Or what are you doing for member, you know, Josh, you referred somebody. Yeah. I'm going to give you a month credit. Sure. You know, it just adds up. Yeah, and it's not easy opening a gym. And if you guys don't know, the current promotion is 30 Days, Three Pillars, right? You can come in for uh, the fitness side. You can come in for a Krav Maga or some Citizen Defender. They're all fantastic programs. Go to the website. Click on the new. I think you put the banner up there yesterday. Yeah, there's a pop-up. And yeah. then uh, right below, kind of 
um, a quarter of the way down, like yeah. one scroll down, I think ish. So there's did, another apply yeah. here. Just simple. Put your name in there, your phone number, and your email, and you know we're gonna talk to you and see if you're a good fit. We're a small gym. I don't want a big box gym. No, I could charge less, and you could get a ton of people in here, and you know, people looking for the 24 hour of the planet. Like go to the cheap place, yeah. like, and just do your own crap. I want to mentor people. I want to help people grow. We want those connections, that class that, hey, where the heck were you, Josh? Yeah. Like the people in your class are missing you. Um, So, you know, that's our gym. We want to make sure people aren't jerks. And we just don't take everybody. I mean, I was sitting there talking with John. He's like, we just don't take people, man. You've got to apply. And then I've got to talk to you, right? Because we don't want... Yeah, get get a feel for the person. Yeah. Yeah, if you're going to be in here and you're gonna hurt people or drag down like yeah i don't know you just like, i mean i have tried to motivate up, but, one yeah. guy that you know is a widower and oh you know just the kind of like i'm like maybe you need it but i think you just need to get out of that funk i think you're yeah. a good person but you're really kind of like oh tough to get motivated uh, yeah. well you clicked on the ad right you clicked on it part like, of you wants to do something like come on man i think it'll be good for you yeah you know i've talked to him now twice and still well, i haven't looked at the website yet I got to be good. Get out of there. Like, get out of your comfort zone. Look, guys, this is not my comfort zone. I don't like talking. I don't He does like a lot, but he's shit. right. Josh makes me do it. He just sets Every, up, mm-hmm. and he's like, let's record. And then I put cameras on him, and I say, go. I'm not ready, Josh. Go, John. Go, 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 go. <laughs> I hate it. Um, so, working out, do something. You mm-hmm. know, if you're in Castle Rock and you're a gym, you want to try to get everybody together. I'm here. You know, I th- I think we could uh, do some good for us. You know, yeah. small business is so tough. They all want the big corporate elitist control. Mm. They want to know what you do. They want to know what you think. But I think yeah. I said that out of order. I've been it's working on that line from Oliver Anthony. They want to know what you think. want to know what, what you, you do. do. Freaking bastards. Um, <laughs> that's true, though. I mean, that's... They do. It's a whole they, business. These elitists on both sides, guys. Both sides. Freaking elitist, you have no... F- get out and get a real freaking job. Ugh. Get a re- Not one your daddy or your mommy gave you. Go out there yeah. and get a job. Or start a business and realize how hard it is, right? I mean, how many politicians get become politicians and never had to make payroll? Yeah. I mean, right? it's like one of the arguments, like, well, Trump's dad gave him some money. How many other people yeah. have gotten money from their parents and Blown pissed it. it away? Right. Like He I became a billionaire with it. Like, and like relatively, you're like, geez, you know, I mean, I'll give you a thousand dollars, Josh. Let's see what you, can you do the same math on that? Uh, you're going to, okay. I'm going to give you a thousand dollars. You're going to start, you're going to blow up your business right now. Okay. I'm going to, you're going to like, you're going to buy some, Josh is going to buy some new cameras. Right. It would be equipment. That'd be the first thing I do is just upgrade equipment. I got new equipment and then shit. Right. Oh, I need clients. (laughs) So it's like. Do I put that oh, into clients or do I put that into equipment? I mean, these are the decisions well, 15, you have to 50, make. Yeah, I mean, so I don't know. It's hard, man. Like just small business, yeah, beats you up. You know, right. I constantly like sometimes just say, "F it," or like Cartman, "Screw you guys, I'm no. going home." Yeah. I, and then how often do you <laughs> sit there and you're like, "Do I keep doing this?" Right? I could just go work for somebody else, make a decent living, and just. Like, not then you're like, words. then I'm like, ah, now you're working for the man. Right. And then, you know, I mean, being a business owner, at least you get more flexibility. You probably work more than you would in a nine to five job. You do. Oh, I mean, you it, totally the hours people, I like, see you, you make more in. money. I'm like, ah, that's relative to how many hours I put in. And when you're at your business 50, 60 hours, a week, I mean, there's no such thing as a day off when you own a business. How many times have you been on vacation and you're still checking your email or you take one well, of my phone calls? To. Yeah. yeah, you can't stop. You have to call people because if you don't call them back, right? And if you you got they are not motivated anymore. They lost that little right. flame that was like flickering. And it's gym sales. And if you've ever done sales in any way, you you know yeah, that if you don't call sales. them, right? They do, and they hate you for it. But it's what you have to do, and that's the the crux of, of owning a gym, right? Is you have to act as that salesperson. They don't want to talk to a salesperson. That's the only way you get them in the door. Yeah, I mean, I kind of well, I just said to a guy, Mike. Well, he was thinking about month to month, and he's like, oh, well, you do have this six-week guarantee. I'm like, yeah, you can get the better price. I mean, you're going to have to live up to our six-week guarantee that you actually have to show up and try and communicate with us 
of how oh, we're letting the down piece. or, yeah. you know, people overdo it all the time. Mm-hmm. There's just tons of stuff. We're here to help people. That's like what I want to do. That's why I keep going through the crappy side of the business. Mm-hmm. You know, it beats you up. It just, oh yeah, like, and sometimes you just got to go screw it. We're going to, you know, we're going to try to figure it out. But yeah. that's where I just, I hate the pharmaceutical companies. I hate insurance companies because they don't know. They don't want to pay for what you're paying for. They want to find a way out of it. Out of it. All of mm, Constantly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't get started on that one. I that's, mean, mm. I got denied off of our latest policy on the family because, gosh, I guess it was before COVID. I had um, surgery in my knee and I had a bunch of pain. So my like some swelling. My wife's like, that could be a blood clot. Right, which is dangerous. We go to the ER. They put me on blood thinners. I go back to the doc and they're like, you don't have a blood clot like a day or two later, right? right? Because that's what they have to do. And I'm like, good, I'm off of these things. They denied me for getting one prescription. Yep. After a surgery that's documented, they're like, well, you're on blood thinners because the ER put me on them. Well, and you've never had any. They're like, nope, we're going to deny you. Because we can. Because we can because you're an individual, not some big effing corporation. That's where they're all pushing us, and I'm sick of it. If you haven't gotten that point, this global elitist crap. Like that's why Oliver Anthony is so popular. Like mm-hmm. I, I mean, uh, there's a bunch of people. I don't know the answer for the next president besides me. Like yeah, and and last I I'm checked, like, the war chest is. Is I've zero. got like a couple bucks I gave in my you a wallet. Thousand bucks right? Right. I just gave you a thousand dollars to buy your freaking to it. cameras. <laughs> <laughs> so right. I'm pretty freaking hurting now. Yeah, I was gonna say we're the negative G one grand. I mean. But you know, you're looking at these people like, can we make some common sense? No, freaking things. And I think that's why you know Trump was really popular. Yeah. Um, because he, he does with connect with the working person. Yeah. And he did work his ass off. I mean, he's an asshole. I can live with that. I mean, yeah, what I'd rather take an asshole an and have an economy. And yeah. And a lot of, like, women out there that hate Trump, look around. Mm -hmm. There's so many men, unfortunately, that are just in it for the women. They want to be rich. They want to be famous because they want that power and that influence. And women do freaking go oh oh he's got some money oh people they'll flock to anybody I that mean, might it's in anthropology it's called a subsistence practice right you know how do you get your food and some people in our society go after the person with the most money it's 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 no different than going after somebody that's the farmer right i mean it's yeah it's how people think they will always be attracted to that like those guys are out there you've got to be aware of that and then mm-hmm. just steer around them right but he could still be a good leader. I don't know. I mean, I still like Kennedy. Um, five act. The the um, um, Swami. I like. Um, I think he's a little young, but and he's, he's probably brash. an asshole too. He's you know right. being like I don't know. I think he's, is like he a billionaire too? I thought he probably, was. Probably, I'm sure. Probably. I don't know. I mean, it's. I kind of want a business person in there than a socialist because yeah, I'm a business like, person. Like the, these entitlement programs, some of this crap. We just got to dial it back. Government is too freaking big. Big They want it bigger and bigger. And it's just like... And every time we exercise a right, they're finding a way to arrest us for it. Right? Yeah. I mean, you make a mistake. Like one little... you. Right right now, the the brace thing is is going on, right? And everybody that owned an arm brace or a pistol brace for their weapon, they were told by the ATF it was legal, right? And then suddenly the ATF releases a bunch of papers and Biden administration says they're illegal. So if you're in possession of them, you can either tell us about it and then register it, or you have to destroy it, right? So they were exercising a right, a right that doesn't come from government. It comes from God, right? And they're taking this right, and they're finding a way to go after you for it. So every time you exercise a right, a, a right given to you beyond government, they can make you a felon. And then yeah. take those rights away. And that's what we yeah. face. You have the day. right to defend yourself. It's where, you it's know, our we're business. just listening to Coley and Noir... Yeah. Right. Right before we got on here, he's excellent. Excellent. He's a good at second A person. Um, person. And you're like, the gun is just so vilified. 
We don't do that, like you said, we don't do that with hammers, screwdrivers, Mm -hmm. knives. And it's just like they just distract. It's evil freaking people. Mm -hmm. Um, I forget what um, sheriff or somebody he had, they were interviewing and he said, I can put my gun down right here. It's going to take an evil person to pick it up and do evil. Let's talk about evil because I have the right to protect myself, whether it's a spear, the best thing I can do to defend myself. I have that right. Mm -hmm. And when people start saying like vilifying guns and they just make people afraid and I've said this, we keep it out of school. Anybody like, we're just going to make you afraid and scared. We're going to scare... Josh, you're going to get in a house fire. Your house is going to catch on fire. i got to get insurance. I've 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 got to go home. i got to go... i got to get the water hose out. i got to go get the fire extinguisher. The likelihood of your house catching on fire is so great. There's so many house fires. So many people are dying in their bed. Well, can I sue the the homemaker then for making a dangerous home? Probably. I should. Probably. But if we just start talking about it enough, people are friggin' afraid... To go home and go to bed and like if I fall asleep, my house is likely to catch on fire. They just blow this stuff up. Then your local politicians like we gotta get rid of these houses now. We gotta get rid of houses. We gotta get rid. We gotta. We gotta stop this. To go back to it, guns are not used in most violent crimes. It's knives. Knives. It's knives. And they're super dangerous. Yeah, it's crazy. And when somebody starts to take away my right, that's where I'm like, the. The far left, let's just say, totally loses me because they just want more power. Mm-hmm. So I'm, um, well, you know, you, you know where I, we stand yeah. on that. And if you try to rebel, right, they're gonna start arresting you for sedition, open rebellion against the government, a government that you were told you have the responsibility to keep in check and to revolt against when it becomes violent and dangerous to the Constitution and you. It's kind of a, it's a simple solution. The people, all people should be scared yeah. of this. When they want yeah. control and you think it's a great idea that they take all the weapons away. I, as soon as you start talking like that as a politician, you want another law, another law. You just want more control. They don't want to get you rid of guns. You want total control. There's another line from all right. right. Here's right? the, here's another thing about total control is they want to get rid of cash because cash makes you free. Money that you're in control of makes you free. But if you were to have that um, electronic digital or government digital currency or whatever it is, a yeah. uh, digital currency, imagine what they could control. If you went to the gun store, they could deny the purchase because you can't have that many or you shouldn't have that gun. Somebody else would be making the call yeah. on what you can buy and it's what they want. Yeah, it, that government's too big, people. And if you don't wake up and get your head out of the sand... Mm-hmm. It's gonna be there. And think you about know, the whole. Ge- I know. Let me make this one. We have a whole generation of kids that are being taught that they shouldn't exercise their Second Amendment right, the First Amendment rights, and get used to owning nothing. Go ahead. Sorry, I had to put that out there. That I yes. <laughs> no. Um, no, that's really good. That's why we have you around. I was just gonna say something about your straw. What's wrong with my straw? Is it, it's bendy. You like Sip that? Out of the straw. That's why Sparkle Sash. Straws are not tough. I'm not here to be tough. <laughs> I'm Sparkle Sash. We're, we're talking about the straw now. This isn't, dude, this is like one of the coolest insulated water things. And I have to get, you have to drink water if you train. You just do. I learned that the hard way. But man, this thing has been incredible. He drinks Look out of a water bottle. Freaking ball. tough. Josh. No, like, Look no. like a man, Josh. Mm-mm-mm-mm. Look like a man. I am a man. Here. What is that? Sip, that's my straw. Oh, wait. Look. What, what uh, is that? Don't put that in there. You don't know where that's been. It goes to a, <laughs> it goes to an insulation thing. That foam spray no, insulation. Dude, I this, kept that. These things are amazing. I might. I, All right. I, okay. I okay. This. Now we have to ask the audience. They can fill in. I kept this like a lot of things because I'm a hoarder. My wife said, what are you doing with that? Really? Look, now, look. Now I can be like Josh. And I can drink out of it. I didn't drink out of it. I tried, but... Well, when you're on the air and you're drinking out of your thing, all you hear is like... And there's nothing about you that's ever quiet. And look, this thing's just awesome. And it's the bendy straw, so I don't hurt a tooth. All right. All right, audience, which do you like more? The Hydro Flask, which is really nice, and insulates, or whatever that 
thing. It's was. a water bottle. It's it's don't use a straw, Josh. No, and this thing insulate. No, I'm gonna. You can't stop. There's a lot of things that you've had me change in my lifestyle, but this this is staying, dude. That's a no. I bought replacements for when this breaks. I have backup. I do. This thing ain't going away. I have, love Hydro Flask. I have shit hits the fan water bottles because I cannot live without this. You go into Josh's pan. You go in Josh's basement and he's got like Just nothing but Hydro Flask. <laughs> he's got all backup everywhere. straws. I've got 500 right. backup straws. These things are going to be so valuable when it goes down. <laughs> when we go to digital currency, right. I'm going to be trading straws. <laughs> I'm gonna have straws to trade. But you're right. This is currency. You're absolutely you're right. Like, you touched on it. What's gonna be valuable? It's, it's another gonna thing. be these. It's another thing that you know. Tara's not listening to the podcast. She, she never doesn't care about what do. you do for work. No, she doesn't she care. Never. She just wants you for your body. Yeah, that's it. She's but you're nice. telling her. You're telling her we need these straws for currency. <laughs> <laughs> I really love to have that. But honey, we need this. I really think we right. should buy another five hundred. Right? What? <laughs> these are going to be currency. They're like two hundred. Like two hundred each, right? <laughs> so we're you know go we could this. trade for these straws. Should we get lighters? No, no, no. lighters aren't useful. Bendy straws. <laughs> Bendy straws. Well, that, we found our funny moment for the week. Oh gosh, yeah. I was I was this thinking about that from last week. I was like, I was up in an undisclosed location. <sighs> yeah, having fun. Scouting, yeah, for future retirement slash slash. I'm never gonna really retire, yeah. but um, don't move to Florida. Location. Those hurricanes are Florida. a son of a gun. Hey, I've been through a hurricane. Just you know, I've been through a down. hurricane. <laughs> keep your head down. Um, get a lot of bendy straws. Get a lot of, I'm telling you, it's gonna be so valuable. <laughs> I'm I was like that freaking straw. You know, I'm driving down the road. And I'm like that freaking straw. Josh freaking sparkle <laughs> sash. I'm like. I'm going to have to give him some shit. i got to give him some shit about that. I wore my shirt the other day, and someone's like, what's a sparkle sash? <laughs> and I was like, sit down. <laughs> sit down. <laughs> we're going to have a story. It's story time. I'm going to tell you about the sparkle sash. I, so I can't wait. So we're going to be doing some more training for I, um, Citizen Defender, a new level here soon. And Todd will be back. He's the one that gave me the nickname. Actually, technically, I gave myself the nickname when I said something about a sash for our people. As a joke... As a, jo as a joke, and uh, I can't wait to wear that t-shirt in front of him. In fact, I'm going to yeah. probably order one and give it to him. You know, like, here's your Sparkle Sash t-shirt. <laughs> that was great. So, um, you know, one other thing, like on, you know, guns. Yeah. As gun owners, we have the responsibility to be as prepared as possible because there's people out there vilifying guns. Mm-hmm. Right? Sound bite. Right here. Short. Somebody write down the freaking time. 2810. You didn't write it down. Um, that's your job. Um, you have to be as prepared as you can as a gun owner. Yeah. It's your responsibility. And shooting at targets is one part of your training. I've yeah. talked to a bunch of guys recently that I'm proficient with firearms. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. We fight with guns. Yeah. And when you're not justified to use it, you need to retain it. And that whole aspect, I've been fight doing martial arts for close to 30 years. The shit is hard, guys. Okay. Fighting is hard. Anybody says fighting is easy and this style is the They're answer. Lying. It's like no style. Like you've got to be well-rounded in all aspects of fighting to get out of that mm -hmm. worst case scenario. And when you are only willing to shoot at targets and go to the range, how good are you at weapon retention? Mm -hmm. And you can talk about it. Talk is cheap. Everybody knows that, but so many people just want to talk about it. Mm -hmm. Like, do it. Right. Just do Practice. it. We're about, like, do it. Let's do it. Right. I think one of the best, you know, campaigns ever, Nike. Just, just do, do it. it. Right. Stop talking about it. Let's not going to tell you I'm going to run a marathon. Go out and freaking do it and be like, Josh, I ran a marathon last right. weekend. So, so you run marathons. That would be a true statement at that point. Yeah, instead of talking about it. But gun owners, guys, you need to train. Right. And it's one aspect. You know, and there's only so much we can do, you know, in one class. We're going to work fundamentals if you're oh, new yeah. to firearms here. But it's also keeping that weapon. Knowing how to keep somebody off of you that's grabbing yeah, you. Yeah, Absolutely. And, 
You know, like whether they're trying to grab at your wallet. There's just so many what ifs, guys, or just somebody coming at you and making a decision on whether to shoot or not shoot. Yeah, it's that. Because the gun is vilified and they're looking to vilify you. So be as well trained as you can. Absolutely. That is what we do with the Citizen Defender program. And if that's you, if you want to be more prepared because you're strapping on that gun and you're making the decision to defend life, defend your life, your families, Mm -hmm. or the communities, being as well-trained as you can. And I really feel like the gun industry is leaving that out. And that's why I found Todd Fossey, you Mm -hmm. know, and in that, you know, and it was through... It took you years to really find what you were after. From you know, I mean, I was looking at, you know, you're doing different courses and you're looking at stuff and even just looking at line. What's this person doing? What's that right. person doing? Does that look like something I'd like to go and get certified and bring back? And then, you know, meeting Pete um, with Black Mountain. Yeah. I'm like, whoa, what do you do? Who? Yeah, where are you getting this? Wait a second. And I had seen a little blip of him. I'm like, oh, wait a second. But it was just like one thing, you know, that Google kind of messed up on. They actually YouTube and they gave that, it to you. Like, yeah, well, no, I saw it. But then, you know, like, goodness gracious, like, you know, look at bear attacks and all the your feed's going to be like every third thing is going to be a bear, bear attack. attack right? um, but I'm like, I had watched one of his videos. I'm like, ah, that's kind of cool. We, we, you know, we'll do some grappling and stuff with, you know, a knife or whatever. Mm-hmm. But... He has such an in-depth curriculum. And, you know, like everything else, like people will hack stuff. You know, they're like, oh, I'm going to get the book. I'm going to get the video. And, you know, that's not the same as going and getting certified. Yeah. I'm sorry. You know, and really spending time with that creator versus watching a video online, which so many people, I think somebody just said something about uh, my breathing in the flank drill. A guy is going to like, I'm like, Half you're like, don't comment, or half like, you want to do Murph? How old are you? You want to do Murph against me? I'm almost 52 years old. You want to do Murph? You want to do a hero Take workout? Do, do a Murph workout against John and watch. And like, see if I'm going to die? I think he's like, oh, he's going to blast. I'm it's, like, I'm not. Right. I think it was like 100 degrees anyways, but yeah. on the And you tell me the fight that breath day, is so important. You have to breathe through the fight. And they don't understand it. You know, have like, oh, I'm breathing through my nose? Well, your jaws clenched. I mean, this is what you teach us, right? I mean, it's it's pretty. You're like, you think I'm gonna die that way? Okay, buddy. I don't think you know shit. Yeah. Like half the people that comment out there, but you know, you're just like, how long can you stand okay. in a fight if you hold your breath? And you you watch beginners oh do it all gosh, the time, right? People they gas out so quick. Die so often because they just don't have any breathing. Right. They don't, don't have like, fight breath. Hey, if you don't like my style of breathing, go find some other mm-hmm. shit. Yeah. I'm kind of like, why did you take the fucking 15 seconds to comment? On yeah. my video, besides your asshole. They had nothing else to say. They had nothing trolls. else to do. And, you know, either that is the Chinese or Russian disinformation farms. They're coming after us. I think they're pretty much got a little division. They're going to go after you now that you're running guy. for president? They're like, who is this guy? Silence him. Right. I want to go back him. to the, uh, the the Second Amendment so stuff much, for a we're second. We're not going back to yes, the Second we, Well, I'm going stuff. to it because what, what I'm saying, see, now you're making for forget. The firearms <laughs> industry wants you to be a marksman. Right, that's what they train you. They teach you to be a marksman, your target away. They, that's all they want. Safety, put you on target, and then get that. And then, for the most part, you're done. At least that's their thinking, right? We, on the other hand, realize that most of the things you're going to run into are going to be less than nine feet, six feet in some cases. And if you've ever had to draw your gun on somebody that's just, we'll say, twenty feet away from you, it's hard to put rounds on them it's hard at six feet i've got it how often do you have a knife in me before i can even get out of the holster and on you practicing right and that's that's not that not they're teaching that's what we do we 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 show you those scenarios so you can actually play with them right so you get better and better at it yeah Yeah. i mean how many bad draws have we all had all the time shirts freaking in it you know you don't clear your garment yeah enough that's the stuff we're doing, guys, and you can think you're freaking awesome at it. I suck at it, and I do it at least five to six days a week. At least. I yeah. think I suck. And you're out there telling me you're awesome. So. Um, show us your challenge video. Do the exact same thing as yeah. show us how good you are. I know people. Like show, like show put us. Put under stress. 
Yeah. Oh, and it's got to be real stress. I mean, have that person run at you with that knife. And then yeah. once that happens... Have them in somebody... clinch, and all of a sudden they're, you're like, Shh, knife! Right. You thought you were in a fist fight? Because, guys, you can't just shoot people. That's just going to freaking look bad for all the rest of the 2A yeah. people if you're just out there shooting people. And Doesn't it's a bad them. shoot. I mean, you see how... And you're going to jail. Law enforcement is so critiqued. I feel so bad for those yeah, guys. Yeah, me too. Like, oh, they shot that. Like, yeah, I had a freaking knife. I think there was up. I watched a video. It was Colorado. That, you know, the woman went for a gun in the the console of her Jeep. Like, as she was just, like, stopped in the middle of the, like, turn lane. I think she was, like, in the road, two, three lane road and kind of, you know, commercial or whatever. She was mm-hmm. in the turn lane to turn left. And she's just parked there i can't remember if she's going the wrong way but the cop ended up had to shoot her and actually there was a round that went into a uh the jeep that was kind of parked 25 50 feet away mm-hmm. from her behind that they were like we're turning that way and they had stopped and they were still there i mean i probably would have just freaking left but a yeah. round went through that windshield cops have it tough especially they when do. You, you put yourself in those situations he was so freaking like oh right. like are you guys okay? Like, oh shit, like a fucking yeah. round went through the wind. Like, right? Because he's like not you're there responsible to for every. But he's now in a situation where one freaking second and he's getting rounds on him. Yeah, and now we force cops to be punished civilly for doing their, their duty job. to protect to us. Protect your dumbass. Right. You for doing dumbass. stupid stuff. You're dumbass. So, oh, I had a we're cop supporters. One. We love law enforcement. Oh. My wife has this battle on Instagram. It's not really a battle. She wins. Um, yeah, um, okay. With about the, the box funny, things. funny things. Like, oh, have you seen this one? And generally, I'm not on there. I'll go mm-hmm. a little bit. And then you just have to tell yourself to stop. Get off the stupid thing. When you feel <laughs> like, stop. Just stop. Yeah. Just stop. Don't get started for most just part. Just stop. It's go, designed like, to suck you in. Yeah. I'm like, just stop. Just stop. But it was a little, I'm like, oh my gosh, this little kid is just like me. I should send it. Could you pull it up on your computer? Oh, I have so many good ones. Uh, oh, I should send you something. But you're like hidden on Instagram. I don't even know what your Instagram handle is. That's because I don't want people to know about me. It's at Sparkle Sash. No, I'm not going to say what it is, but I should create a Sparkle Sash. Like we should do a Spark, like Master Kin, like that funny stuff that he does on YouTube. We should do like Sparkle Sash, shoot or no shoots. <laughs> yeah. It was all little kids. It's yeah. all little kids. It's too long. Like I was going to clip it out and put it on the band social media app um, that we post uh, everything on for the gym. Uh, this little kid was just like grumpy. It was like, it was like they clipped a bunch of little things of kids, but it was like me when I haven't had my morning coffee. And he's like, he's saying something about, uh, I'll post it on band. So if okay, you guys yeah. watch and if you're not on band, I don't know, hit me up. Yeah. We'll John at rmsdf.com. I will send it to you, you know, at RMSDF and at ClearSky.Training or all our my Instagram one, stuff. My favorite one that you post is where that one kid's there and he's got he's crying and he's punching the bag. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's like, I hate it. <laughs> Stupid. At least you showed up. I mean, a coach would be at happy that he just showed, showed up. up. At least right. you showed up. <laughs> I was like, I feel like that. Old. Sometimes it you're like, work. hey, you showed up. You're doing better than most people. Yeah. You showed up. You walked in the door and you're going through the motions. Sometimes you find yourself, okay, now kicking it in a little bit. Yeah, well, you start getting inspired by the people around you. You come in drag. I don't know how many times Tara's come in. She's like, I just don't want to go. And I was like, yeah, just go. Just go. Just go. Just you're going to feel go better the once motions. you go there. Tell the coach, I'm just going yeah. through the motions. I'm here. You're here. I I mean, I told uh, yeah. the guy I was talking to yesterday, I'm like, if any of the coaches give you a hard time for scaling an exercise or working around it or, hey, I don't know about my shoulder on, you know, doing a forward roll, whatever it is, not that we do a whole ton of forward rolls around here, yeah, but, yeah. Um, you know, it's a skill. It's a good thing. You know, like, tumbling is really good, especially as you get older and like use your body stuff. Yeah. Do stuff that's uncomfortable. Learn how get, to fall. Yeah. Learn how to move. Like. Yeah. It'd be way better. Um, but if you're not comfortable yet, okay, fine. You'll we'll get there. Hopefully, yeah. maybe next month or in six months, yeah. you'll be more confident. But I'm like, tell her, tell me. You know, I'm like, the Inform great thing me. here, I'm like, I can punch my Krav Maga instructors. Um, not listening to the client. I mean, don't force somebody to do something they're not comfortable with. That's yeah, just yeah, bad yeah. instruction. Right. It's just bad business. You're just a bad coach. 
uh, hey, you're not comfortable? All right, we'll get you. We'll get you there. We'll get you there. Like we can scale it or yeah, like, okay, watch the drill. And when you're yes. comfortable, you're comfortable. But, you know, you got to do stuff. Yeah. You got to do that uncomfortable. Like, actually, I want to get back to handstands. I was on those. I, I forget Dude, what. those handstand push-up things. Oh, yeah. Just the, the freestand holds. Woo! I was really on a kick a bunch of years ago. I was doing a lot. My wife is awesome at that. Yeah. walking but it's like people that did gymnastics and like it's a good skill to keep up move your body through space yeah. just do something but just show up right. you know suck a little less and who cares hey i'm here i had a crappy night's sleep there's always show an excuse up. i freaking am tired every freaking day yeah just get up and go mm -hmm. and that's not helping get your ass in a cold shower that'll freaking right. increase that dopamine get yourself going and yeah it sucks i don't want to do it like everything sucks. that's where the world is blowing up yeah. because people are too comfortable i don't want to do this i don't want to do that i don't know i've been thinking a lot of shit i don't like because i'm good like i've been an athlete my whole life that's easy for me mm -hmm. i'd like it I like training. I do this stuff. I don't like talking. I don't like that. I don't like being on camera. And that's my whole business. Like, I mean, I I'm should have been on camera. Yeah, you're a talker. Um, what else? You know, it's like conversations. I always say I'm like, I try to be a better parent. I don't know. I try to lead by example. You're like, ideas. I'm like, I don't know. I do a lot by example. Example, yeah. You know, and trying to set a good example for your kids and you know I don't think I'm that great at that I try to be um, I definitely think I'm like I'm way better at coaching kids. kids than being a parent I try my best and maybe you know sometimes that's not the best like, oh, I try try my best well we can't even get try, try to out of that. most people though what's that we can't even get try out of most people yeah you know? I mean parents are so drained and but I think a lot of it is just the distractions from these people that want total control. Instagram, Facebook, they want you on that platform more. Everything wants you more and more. And now it's taking away. Yeah. That's where I'm like, I'd just like to move to the woods of Vermont or something. Just disappear. Maine. Maine might be better. Maine's beautiful. I, I shot yeah. the bean there all the time, L.O. Bean. So how, I mean, everybody has that conversation with that voice in their head that says, don't do it. And the thing I learned is just don't have that conversation. No, tell don't, me, like, just don't up. just don't talk to it. Just just be like, this is what I'm doing today. I'm going to go do it. That's how I start the day. Just do it. Because yeah. if I have that conversation with my head, I will find a reason to listen to it. Yeah. Tell yourself you suck. Now, okay, yeah. now you're now you're just sucking. Right. You're just talking about it. You suck. You'll get it on Tuesday. Whatever. I always tell the kids like, it's okay to tell that voice in your head to shut up. Yeah. You're not telling your mom to shut up. You're telling the voice in your head, if you don't control that voice in your head, it's going to take over. Yeah. And it's just going to let you do crappy things. Right. Just mush. We have like, a body that can do anything. It's our mind that gets in the way. Yeah, constantly. I mean, I thought, I wanted, it was uh, uh, Vince Lombardi used to say that. Or not Vince, um, he's a local reporter, but Vic Lomb Lombardi Trophy, right? He used to say that you, God gave you a body that can do anything. You just, you have to convince your mind of it. Yeah. I'm paraphrasing what he said. Yeah. He's right, though, because... Your body will do things without you realizing it, right? The only thing that gets in the way of you is you. Yeah. We can't control it. Yeah. You're not going to control the crap that happens to you in life. You can just control how you react to it. Yeah. Respond. It's crazy. I, mean, I wish you could help more people just feel better and know like a little bit of exercise. Right. And eating right. But it's like the food. They want total control of what you eat. They want you there and they're going to push these commercials that, you know, like we were saying this morning at 5.30 a.m. Project Fit. I'm like, donuts aren't good. <laughs> don't listen to that voice. And somebody's like, I don't want to do burpees. Um, a little fairy, Susie, she's right. A little fairy just came to me <laughs> and said, I should do this instead of burpees today because that'll make me feel good. And then you'll feel good because I felt good about doing it. I'm like... No, I'm not. I don't feel good that that boy, that you didn't do burpees. <laughs> but you're like, oh, just do it. You're moving. 
I hate fighting the, the battle. It's like to do them. fighting the battle. It's yeah. like, are you going to fight this battle with your kids? Am I going to fight this battle with Susie, mm-hmm. who doesn't want to do burpees today? <laughs> At least she's freaking here All doing right, something. Door. And I'm like, burpees are good for you. Don't listen to that voice. It's the same voice that says, have another glass of wine. Donuts yep. are good. And somebody's like, donuts are good, but they're not good for, for you. you. Right? They taste good. That's and the they just suck you in. It's like all the sugar, all the crap. Right. And you feel good just you're eating them. Like sick like, of this freaking, like this world that we're in, and what you you don't have control. What yeah. can we do? I can try to do this little voice that's talking to like four people, and you've convinced me that I should do it, and I've convinced myself that I suck at it and I don't like it, so do it. Maybe it'll benefit us in a year or two or whatever, yeah. but, you know, get out there and do something, whatever it is. When you when you get rid of just a little bit of sugar in your life and you go and eat something sugary, oh, it's you're disgusting. shocked how sweet it is. And it's just like, I didn't realize how sweet just the, I mean, they have these great uh, cashews from Sam's Club. They're uh, an everything cashew. And but they've got a layer of sugar on it. Oh you know, god, so I, yeah. So I, I like we had, were trying to get rid of more and more sugar. So I went to snack. I was like, I grab those cashews. I put them in my mouth. I'm like, all I can taste is the caramelized sugar yeah, on the is, outside is, is with crap. the onions and garlic. So and here's what you do. It's like whoa, whoa. Here's what you do. I'm gonna forget, and they're not a sponsor, so I'm not gonna even plug them. Um, you go and buy raw cashews, cashews, a little bit of olive oil, yeah. mix it all around. Throw it in the oven for like eight minutes, mix them back around, put them in for another eight-ish minutes in there, and then take them out and lightly salt them. Salt them. them. It'd be really And good. let them cool. That's what I do. Yeah. Because I didn't know what they were doing for... It's like canola oil. I don't even know what they're when putting you just on them. So I'm like, I'm going to put olive oil on them. So at least you're doing something better than the crap oil that you don't really know what the oh. hell they're... They're it doing with. it yeah. to roast those cashews, or so that's what I do right for up. my cashews, and it I'm doesn't take freaking long. Yeah, because they'll and put I, like, sugar in everything. Seal all, like I buy like two hundred and something dollars worth of cashews. Yeah, and, and then I vacuum seal things. them all yeah. into you know what fits on the cookie tray. Yeah, and then I bake them and put them in a glass jar and. I've seen then, you lunch on them. You go home and I, I see you reach And then uh, bake some more. Right. And you can usually do that when you're cooking something else. Like, I don't have any time. Get off Instagram. I mean, we're trying to the... shop healthy. And every time we pick up the back of something, I'm like, high fructose corn syrup. There's some crap. High fructose corn syrup. And I'm just like, how many products are out there that have this stuff in it? And so far, it's like everything, man. And it's so much crap. And it's so easy. And they're to making get... people sick. They're... Yeah. When you they eat are different. They are when you the eat different. Food you feel better. They're putting crap in there. We need like the government's not doing jack shit that's important to the people. Yeah, that's where I'm at. All of them. I think they need to do a better freaking job. We need to hold them accountable instead of like, no, look over here, look over there, mm-hmm. you little peons, look over here. We have enough money to walk you around like the Pied Piper. We need to look. We we know it. You we have to do some shit about it, people. I don't know. That's my that's my little spiel to the four people that listen. If Josh can convince me otherwise that there's more than well, four people. There is. Go to the red circle. There's a lot of people that listen there's to us. And you, it's getting bigger. Hey, when you look at the Maybe track, it's still going up. Stuff out. Don't blame me. I think if you need to share more stuff out. See, it's always coming back. It's to always me. coming I back on you doing your job, this. and you're like, what I just job? want to sip out of my sippy straw. I just want to sit down and relax. And everybody wants has I expectations. Want more. Josh, I pay you to do this job. Well, John, you do. <laughs> you do. Um, unless you're like virtual, like you need a little hologram that buzzes Josh in. Right. Oh, maybe we should create a hologram that show up to the office for you. You just show up there, there at, the, at the desk, smiling, waving at a hologram. <laughs> and just stand over on one side of the thing. All right. Okay. I need to work on Saturday. Burpees now. Okay, good. Ugh. All right. I now we're it. doing sit-ups. Okay. Grab some tie pads. Let's go. I'm going to do some tie pad work. All right, this is what I want you to focus on. <laughs> Josh is transparent, and I'm moving right through. <laughs> it's the hologram, Josh. The virtual coach. Yeah. Um, no. So, that's the world. All right, we're going off. 
sideways yeah. here. Let us know what you think. Sippy straw or a freaking water bottle? Are you out there with a sippy cup? That's what I think. Do you want to be a sippy cup with a sippy straw or not? Let us know in person. Better to comment on YouTube here. That'll help out the algorithm. Visit our store, clearsky-online.com for all your gear um, that we do. We got some 2A gear out there. We've got um, our Citizen Defender uh, tab. We've got stuff for the Krav Maga enthusiast. And I'm always constantly uh, building it. We're really kind of building out that Clear Sky brand that'll turn into more mentoring. You need help out there. Hit me up if you're a small gym. I'll give you some honest stuff here um, on my experience in 30 years in the industry. It's like just having somebody to bounce off ideas that aren't looking for more money. 30, know, days, three, 30 days, three pillars, 30 days, three pillars. And also here, we're doing that 30 days, three pillars. If you want to apply, visit rmsdf.com and hit that apply button. We're looking for some good people, just like you would want to be working out with good people. We're here filtering through so it's not a bunch of people just taking selfies of their workout, and, you know, whatever. Josh is over there with his baggy shirt. Don't give me the roll up. Josh is trying to be like, hey, how are you? Look at my awesome hairy chest. It is you awesome. You guys should be looking at me. It's delicious. Look at me. Delicious. delicious. Yes, Tara, it's delicious. Oh, God. <laughs> send, send you better home, check the sippy straw situation in the basement because that's not going to be worth jack shit when the shit hits the van. Except for Josh. I'm wrapping it up, guys. Take care. Thanks for making it this far in the podcast. All right, we're out of here. Your dollars ain't shit. Tell somebody. Do something and vote.